People get on their horse and they ride it to the end. We're about kicking the fucking horse out from under you on this show, folks. <laughs> right. So that you can't ride it all the way to the end. And I gotta tell you, since I started this show, I can't find my fucking horse. The plan. It's the 28th day of February, 2016, and this is The Radical Agnostic. Goes to the Oscars. No, that's not. We're not doing that. Um, the Oscar. I'm just talking about Oscar the Fish. Oh yeah, uh, my friend's Oscars. there with a big camera on his shoulder. My name's John. I'm your host. My co-host is Mark. No, it's not. And then the stowaway guest, Brian Richter. Background. He's we got here either. The other guest, Eddie West. Hey, you're everyone. lying about all this. None of us are here. You're, you're by yourself making these voices. Like Damn good at it. The end of Saint Elsewhere. <laughs> It's all just an autistic kid with a snow globe. Snow globe, yeah. Um, to, be, to be fair, he was hearing things earlier. He answered the door. No one was there. <clears throat> now that the show is so popular, I think we can do like a 90-minute show. We can abandon the... We, we, have, seven, <laughs> we have seven listeners? Yeah, dude. Yep. Yep. Some say seven and a half by yeah. some... Who are we counting as half? Well... No uh, names. Yeah. No names. Sam, it's not you. No. You're not the half. The retarded kid on the corner selling fireworks. <laughs> as soon as we get into double digit listeners, we can slam them with the 14 hour show. Did you hear that, Mom? John said retarded. That'll just that's, be not, for, that's not very liberal. The 14 hour show will just be for the Patreons. Yeah, good. That's what we <laughs> should talk about. Uh, guys, we're on iTunes. Thanks to Eddie West. Eddie West? I did. Came stuff. through, pulled through, got us on the big show. The big time. The, the big, big apple. Time. That's how we got those seven listeners. We're on iTunes, everybody. Yep. Subscribe. We're also on Twitter, Radical Agnostic, with the, with the, the, the symbol before it. I, yep. Hashtag. It's sometimes at, symbol. sometimes right. John will say stuff on there. Yeah. Um, He'll tweet. I'll tweet. He's super tweety. I'll tweet or I won't tweet. No, nobody knows. <laughs> and then... Um, we're on that. We're on this thing called Patreon. So this is a, a website where the show is like registered there, and you just go search out the show, and you can donate to the show. So we haven't asked anyone for donations yet, but now it would we let are. us get better equipment and stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm still paying off the the freaking credit card for this stuff. Hundred dollar a day dope habit. <laughs> oh jeez. So now we know what Mark needs the money for. I feel like we started off kilter. <laughs> I'm not Scottish. Oh, jeez, Louise. <laughs> I think we're right on target. <laughs> we were talking about Eddie's new podcast called Nonsense Debris, and he did his first uh, his first episode, and he, he was talking about how his co-host was a little bit worried about saying you know saying the wrong thing on the air. You don't <laughs> you get you know my my former co-host. Yeah, your former co-host. He's real <laughs> worried. Already bailed. He's worried about about coming on and, and saying you know something offensive could get him in trouble at work professionally you know reputation wise. I know how that is. And then and then Brian said the following. I didn't come on here to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> you put a, put a microphone in front of me, man. Like what? he's not worried about it, and most of us, uh, I don't think the rest of us are either. So. Uh, so Eddie, you, that, 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 that's a, a hurdle you hit there. Your co-host drops out after episode one. Well, just to be fair, no one listened to episode one. Anyway. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm, I was just going to say, just to be fair, Eddie's the only one here with a job. What do you mean? Well, a real job. <laughs> job. He's a, he's an he's an academic unintegrity facilitator. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, quite okay, a charge right. you've leveled against me. Well, I'll, I do I'll, work like uh, five yes, or six do, days a week. I don't think you can say anything and get kicked off that. That's what, I guess what I'm implying. If I was rude what, to a client, what would, would you on the air? Oh no, on the air. Yeah. Uh, what can you yeah. say on the of this program right now that you would get fired from that job? Well, if well, it would like start divulging names and addresses yeah, of yeah. people if, you if, give <laughs> stuff to, that might that might do. If the, the show were popular and someone from I got Joe Schmo an A in uh, <laughs> in basket weaving class yeah. with my essay on. If if someone uh, from the company listened to the show and I named the company and said what we do and said I was ashamed of it or something, I'd be gone. I'm an independent contractor, so I have no rights. So I, I would be just disconnected from the site the next day. I'm pretty okay. sure. So, uh, so I'll grant you that, and there's a possibility, although it's very, very thin. Because no one listens to the show? <laughs> well, someone from the company right. listens to the show, and you're going to say something to where you're really embarrassed about having that job. 
or smear them or something. I think so, I yeah. think they should like you talking about it because you always talk in good terms about it. And yeah, you know, it's, this is not we don't spend an hour bashing your job. I I, yeah. I don't think any of us here really like we'll make we're going to crack jokes at your expense forever. I mean, that's just going to happen. <laughs> but like none of us here actually think that it's as horrific as like, some schools want to pretend. Yeah, I, I, I will be working in a week. Yeah, Brian just got a job, and and I just do feel like I should explain that I, I what I do is I work for a website and I write papers for graduate students and undergrads and PhD students, uh, and so it's it's not illegal, <laughs> but uh, it's it is it's unethical. Upon. It's not illegal; it's just frowned upon. <laughs> right. So, uh, Brian, yeah, you got you got hooked up with a new gig. <laughs> Don't just ignore the screaming, the like agonized screaming coming from the courtyard. Please, everybody. My roof is on fire. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing stuff with the mobile crisis team. The mobile crisis team. What yeah. kind of job is that, man? Running That's around assessing the level of crazy in a person. To subduing see the dude outside screaming. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be working for the government. Doing. That's what I'll be doing next week. <laughs> You'll be kind of... A, Alongside the cops, a lot of times, yeah, right? Yeah, most times, that's what I hear. Like there, so people outside uh, front of the grocery store, you know, helicoptering their penis and talking about the Pope. I'll probably see a few of those. Yeah, yeah. I'll meet Jesus a few more times in, in my mental health career so far. I've met him probably about a thousand times. I'll, I'll meet a few more incarnations of Jesus. I'm oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Has he ever Jesus, been along? The right. thing is, though, I always give them a fucking sandwich. It can oh, never yeah. give me any bread, no fish, <laughs> no nothing, dude. I give I give out the sandwiches to the Jesuses. Yeah, Jesus gets a sandwich like everybody else. Well, you, you should just give Jesus kindly. the one sandwich and, and tell <laughs> him to give it to everybody else. Yeah. Multiply Here, now it. you pass you yeah. multiply this and pass it out to everyone else. Most people would probably be terrified of that job. Uh, you're not. You've been doing this for twenty years or something, so you don't feel any nerves, do you? No. You don't care, yeah. Going out there, crazy people, cops. You know, honestly, I have more nerves about keeping my tongue during the CPI class when they're going to tell the jujitsu brown belt how to restrain somebody with this fucking goofy technique, and I'm going to be like, yeah, "Yeah, okay, you don't seem into it. I'm like, well, because it doesn't work. But all these jobs teach you like this corporate self defense, and it has to be accessible to like the 78 year old nurse, like that. And and let me break this down to you: if the 78 year old nurse can accomplish the restraint technique, and they haven't been training of Martial discipline their whole life, then that then it doesn't work, right? And it just uh, doesn't work. And that's how you sum that up. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. What it ends up as is a dog pile, and it's completely unsafe. And the stuff that they would tell you unsafe is actually much safer. Well, it's like what you slam a clipboard into their throat and jam your pen in clipboard their jitsu. Eye. No, it'd be it'd be much easier. It's much easier for me to control these guys with jujitsu than it is for no, me no, to control no. Them but I mean, what the corporate what the corporate training that they're giving you? It's just lame stuff like handle with care. You know, it's like wrap your <laughs> arm around their arm. Crisis gently. Prevention yeah. Institute. It's yeah, it's yeah. all uh, fluffy social worker bullshit. <laughs> that where where they talk about de escalation and the five levels of escalation during a crisis. And you know what? Here here the long and short of it is, you got to figure out a way to shut it down before it goes fucking nuclear. You don't need to name every fucking step in the process. And yeah, it's. They're just lame. I'm more nervous about just being polite to that guy. Well, on the on the, the the happy side, you'll be making money, and every week you'll have a story, a new story for us, and you know, no oh, questions yeah. asked. That's right. Yeah, sure, we're here and ready to violate HIPAA. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's John's radical. trying to John's trying to prove his point about saying something on the show and getting fired from your Yeah. We'll do an experiment. Well, that, probably, if it's anybody, it's going to be me. If, if you can step on your dick, I'm good for it. Oh, man. Well, we'll do a quick uh, This Week in Politics. Um, yesterday, the Hillary Clinton just absolutely blew Bernie Sanders out of the water in South Carolina primary. Um, it, it was bad, you know. I was I was thinking that he, he needed to get a little bit closer for the campaign to sort of still – have momentum, but I don't know. Maybe I'm being pessimistic. There's a lot of states left. We'll see how people vote. But Hillary ran away with that thing. You know, the last time a uh, Democratic uh, candidate won South Carolina was 1976. You mean in the general? Yeah, yeah. In the general election. That's right. Yeah, Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter was the last one to win South Carolina. Yeah. It's a very conservative which is, state, which is why Hillary won. <laughs> well, it's particularly <laughs> ironic, though, that... It, it, so if he so he won uh, the nomination after winning South Carolina, and he was also the driving force between the creation of the superdelegates. 
Yeah, yeah. And then and now the establishment care, uh, candidate is winning that state. <laughs> I just find that that reversal. I don't know. So I'm a little bit. Um, Did you cry? No, but I wanted to. It's just I, so I disappointing know. that this she is, will be the person I'm supposed to back. This is the state and, that just uh, took the Confederate flag down as their state flag. Yeah. So if you have someone running against Trump, you might want them more this, like Trump. Is this your first taste of real political disappointment, John? No. Because I'm a little older, so I've seen it. If you, I've been through two Bushes. Like... Yeah, I, I'm just disappointed I mean, I mean, in who the party is shoveling forth to battle Trump is what I'm saying. I'm saying she has so many liabilities. She is not the strong centrist candidate that they're portraying her to be. Trump can attack her from the left on like three important things. The Iraq war. But hold on. Hold Wall on. Street yeah, but, donations. But this, the facts have never stopped Trump from attacking someone. <laughs> Well, and the facts also, aren't stopping Hillary either. I'm not, I'm not, because the facts mean? are that she's a fucking horrible candidate and probably not even a good no, my, person. My point is he can he can with honesty attack her from the left on those issues if it's her versus him in the but general. His support election. has nothing to do with honesty. So like, remember when he, he will, does hers, but it'll no, damage her anything. because it, it'll be true. He'll draw it's more independence. Bad. I'm just Come trying on. to beef you guys on this and show you the futility of the fucking American political process. It's well, a also, fucking it's a, joke. Eh. Also, anything he it's attacks her with isn't going to affect her because she's already been through these scandals. She can't be harmed. She's fucking Teflon, dude. Yeah, man. No, and if, if Gotti now, had now her Sanders skin, got he would have never Sanders got the nomination. He hasn't been tested yet. He hasn't gone through any scandals. So when they throw that stuff. Up, Against him, then he's going to just crumple. You don't really I mean, think that. Well, what would they have to throw against him? I mean, he's, he's, does he's, he do anything scandalous? No. This, he's is, got this is my inner Barnaby like the, coming uh, out. <laughs> yeah, this is Barnaby. He sounds like the, the, the least scandalous dude I've ever heard of in politics. Oh, they'll find something. I, oh, man, I really try to avoid any kind of angry, right, type, fast typing on Facebook anymore, like for two hours. But, but Barnaby <laughs> really just dug it in last night, man. He's like, Anyway, I, I got I got riled up, man, and we typed a lot. We, no, no, there were no personal insults, really, or anything, but eh, I think I made my case. The whole time, I was, like, mumbling to myself with Paula in the apartment. I was like, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm an <laughs> idiot. I'm wasting my night. I'm wasting my life typing like this, blah, 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 and I just had to keep going back. <laughs> and furthermore... Well, I, I didn't understand where he got his uh, <sighs> figures because he said that Sanders won the white male vote. Right. But she actually won two to one the white male vote. Yeah, I think the only thing think, he won was an under 30 yeah, category. Yeah, he only, he only won under 30, so. Whatever. Well, like... Like I've just established, I mean, facts, they don't they don't really matter to Hillary Clinton supporters. Guess they not. And they don't matter to Trump supporters, which I guess is no. why that'll be a clash. That's well, equal footing. Clearly, they don't they, matter much to America. Yeah, they, there don't, you go. they don't matter to anyone. They don't matter to Sanders supporters. They don't matter. You know, people get on their horse and they ride it to the end yeah. and they support it. Just like fucking football teams or baseball, True. you know, whatever it is. Well, that's what we're sure about Sure, the Yankees here. cheated, but I mean, they're my team, so they're not yeah. assholes. Or sure, the Patriots, that's not really cheating just because it was against the rules. We're, we're, we're about kicking the fucking horse out from under you on this show, folks. <laughs> right. So that you can't ride it all the way to the end. And I got to tell you, since I started this show, I can't find my fucking horse. Well put. Can't find him. I've been walking around enjoying the view. Ever since. Good Are riddance. you saying that you're looking for a horse with no name? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd name my horse. Dear. Horse yeah. of a different color. Uh, All right. Well, you know, as uh, I want to play, play a little clip here. As, as, as depressed as I was about the Democratic race and, you know, it's starting to look bad for Bernie, um, there were some things that, that could cheer me up. So, uh, Bur- Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't get nervous. My, my name 
nervous. If you don't, there's nothing about you that makes anyone nervous. You lose people are actually watching. I want to know what's happening. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Well, if I'm going to ask that my time not be deducted, when you saw the whole thing, control. Okay, now. The latest debate was Trump. Now, Trump. Hold on, hold on. 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 So stand by. My name. Oh man, it's like a it was like a high school pep rally gone wrong. Our mo- moderators are supposed to have the ability to cut mics. That's part of what they're there for. When you have a microphone, they don't have the Ma- these, these blitzers don't have the balls to cut a mic, dude. I don't, yeah, I wanna, and the, they don't, don't want to miss a line. And, and also, the moderators in these debates are basically like the refs in hockey games. Yeah, to try to <laughs> stop the fights. I got yeah, an idea. really, you're I not. I got an idea. Well, I know how to fix this. All right, go. Okay. You put some dudes in a room in the back, and they have a button that delivers an electric shock. <laughs> but they don't even have to know that. All they have to know is that you follow this light, and when this light comes on, which means their time is up, if the other light is still on, indicating that their mic is still actively receiving sound, then you are. To, if both lights are on, you push the button until only the red light's on, which means the motherfucker has stopped talking, right? And I think that's a perfect plan because um, then they don't have to feel bad for shocking somebody. Ninety-nine percent of the country would would support that legislation, oh, and you would tune in, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, you would tune in to watch that because you're like, you know, that the guy you hate is going to take a shock, and you want to see him ride the lightning a little bit. They should have to wear them as collars, like like dogs. Oh, they have to wear this big boxy dog better. collar. I I wanted your guys' opinion and for on the Republican something. Party. We could make them look like priest collars. Hey. I, I also think that the Jaeger girls should be there, the and who? the yeah. Jaeger girls oh, obviously. And then uh, it should be sponsored by Budweiser. And, yeah, and the fucking candidates should have to like slam a beer every time. And, and they should hand out those there. Bernie Sanders weed pipes that are all over the <laughs> internet right now. <laughs> um. What is your opinion on something, guys? So this person moved into one of the apartments surrounding this one about six months ago. And all day that day, moving in, uh, they played a song loudly on their stereo. A song? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the thing. It was Lionel Richie's Hello. And uh, a statement, a movement. On, on a loop? They played it on a loop? On a loop. For which, the, which really is the only way to play yeah, that song. Can, I mean, let's... So that, that that was so that was about four or five hours. Okay, I'm not kidding. Okay, same same song, and I was like, well, you know, they they probably moved in. They had like a single CD or something, and and that's all the music they had. They don't like the radio. I I don't know. That's move in day, whatever. Mm, maybe they were saying hello to all their neighbors too. Yeah, that was my first thought. Very 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 well could be. Um, apparently, still trying to convey that message to us though, because for for. I mean, two maybe two or three days a week, that song will come on again from that apartment <laughs> on a loop for an hour or two. And now it's... it's maybe it's it, like their it masturbation started hap- song. It started happening. Like it's their sex song. It, yeah, I was wondering... Well, my theory was that something untoward was going on in that apartment when that Nothing music. toward happens to that music. <laughs> <laughs> We're all agreed on that. Yeah. It makes me think of... Uh, among the many mistakes I've made in my life, at one point I actually joined... During my brief and unspectacular college career, I joined a fraternity. <laughs> And one of the things that I was forced to do as part of that whole process was we had to listen to the song Blue on repeat on the loudest you can possibly think. For how long? I want to say six hours, but I have no... Li- At a certain point, you don't know how long it's I, been I, anymore. I have a creepy theory. On, that's when they welcome the new children to closet land. <laughs> the, the it's blue, dabba dee da Oh, no. Listen up. That's Here's a story rough, bro. about a little guy. <laughs> I know all the words <laughs> to that song, and... The worst part is there was a long time I couldn't listen to it, but like I actually do like that song. <laughs> the techno beat and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. The only reason he likes it is because during the trial he dented his fucking helmet, beating his head against the wall. Yeah. The problem. Song's horrible. But like, okay. So all so, jokes aside, though, I'm wondering it's very, what, why they play go that ask. song. Go ask. I, I can't do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hypothesize a theory. All right. Uh, it's Lionel Richie. He actually moved into <laughs> your apartments. <laughs> and he is, it is a sex song. He is pleasuring himself. He it's plays act, that song. Your neighbor wow. is actually Lionel <laughs> Richie. <laughs> I think I would have noticed Lionel. Oh, we know they all look alike to you. Oh. Because you're racist. 
Um, so I just want Eddie soggy biscuit fact or fiction. <clears throat> I I don't even know what that is, but oh, I know okay. biscuits can in fact get soggy. What does that mean, Mark? It's a fraternity thing, supposedly. Oh, well, I thought I it was like the name of a bunch of initiates I don't want to know. stand around a not biscuit, asking. jacking off. Not asking. Uh, to me, last one to like come has to eat the not biscuit. Asking you to explain it. <laughs> Didn't ask. <laughs> I liked it better when I Thanks. thought it was like the name of a punk rock band and their record. <laughs> Soggy Biscuit. Soggy Biscuit and their record was Fact or Fiction. You know, that probably- sounds about right. And then he explained it. And I'm like, oh, it got so bad. Yeah. Hey, hey, you know what? It, it, would, it wouldn't be any worse than Love and Spoonful. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, But that could be Cheerios. Did anything else happen in the, in the fraternity or was that the end of the fun? Oh, there were, there were that's, I, that, that may need its own whole episode. Yeah, but uh, but I was just thinking of the song played on repeat at a loud enough volume for your neighbors to were hear. You it. spanked yeah. it all getting in your fraternity. Um, before we do our main story today, uh, Sam um, Holiday requested uh, Brian's take on the upcoming UFC fight: Conor McGregor versus Nate. Nate Diaz? Nate Diaz? Yeah. So that's a big fight coming up. It was uh, the, the, <clears throat> Connor's other opponent got injured and had to drop out. Broke his foot. And, and Connor's, like he said, he wasn't. He was like his foot wasn't broken. Obviously, he's talking a lot of shit. But he yeah. wants to know what I think, like who's going to win. Yeah, what are your predictions? I mean, Sam says, uh, he says, I think McGregor by TKO, fourth round, with Diaz giving him some trouble on the ground and holding him at bay with his jab slash reach for longer than most people think he will. That's Sam's analysis. Yeah, I yeah. my my I don't know anything. Really, I really I'm not don't, following it. So uh, my my impression was Connor's got to win because he's the yeah, he's the I reigning champion. Well, this and is, plus he's been training for the fight. Like Nate, right, Nate too. took the fight on a week's notice, eleven days notice. So if he was training all the way through, thinking he might get a shot at it, and he's really ready to go and in shape, because Connor's gonna be. And uh, I don't see Nate winning the fight either. But I, I think Nate's bigger, him. right? I mean, naturally, they're both gonna be the same well, size, not but much. Not much bigger. Not much bigger. Oh, I thought that's what you, what you were telling me. He's used He's to fighting. He's a lot taller. Okay, but uh, he doesn't cut as far as as Connor does. But Connor's not going to have to cut near as much for this. If you saw Connor at his weight cuts, like he looked like a skeleton. Yeah, I've seen that before. It's gross. It's completely man. dehydrated. I don't think too. it's fucking healthy at all. No, it's I not. I think healthy. they should adopt jujitsu rules for MMA. That's what I will say. I think they should adopt jujitsu rules for MMA where you have to make your weight. The, right, the, minute the minute before the fucking yeah, fight. Like, yeah. when you walk out there, while they're putting that shit but on Brian, you, you're on a scale. Isn't that more dangerous? Because then, if you dehydrate yourself to make weight, then you'll be dehydrated right then, at that moment the fight starts. Well, it's so going to encourage more fighters to fight at their natural weight. Right. You think? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, well that's the one who the dehydrates themselves isn't going to be more likely to win. No, because <laughs> right. you're going to get Because if I just show up flabby at 181 and you cut from, from fucking 235 to get here and you're completely dehydrated, I'm knocking your ass out in the first minute because you're not going to be able to chase me around. Right. So, But yep. people are going to take those risks, aren't they, fighters? Well, maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. Maybe for at the minute, beginning. And then when dies. they're all getting fucking their asses kicked, they'll be like, eh, I don't want to get my ass kicked anymore. I want to win yeah. some fights. Yeah, you want to be the champ, you fight your natural weight. It makes it a much healthier thing. I mean, I mean that's it's what not I've always common, thought. but there's uh, dudes have died during weight cuts recently yeah. in other in other organizations, not in UFC, but in other organizations. So in, in jiu-jitsu tournaments, I'll cut five pounds or something to make that a weight class, but I'm not cutting 10 or 15 like a, a lot of the other guys do they're pretending they're professional athletes they're cutting 15 pounds in, in two months and it's like dude i I'm cut not 25 that one time yeah i'm never fucking doing it again i've cut like 15 before and no way i'm never doing that I'm well my boy, my boy granger who's not, on a granger who's on a diet pretty much year round to stay at a competition weight he just he's just a very naturally he disciplined. discipline he enjoys disciplining himself and finds you know satisfaction in that so um, yeah. which which i do I a, a do tiny it, bit but not nearly as much as him. He's double tough because that dude will sit there and watch me eat a full dinner while he's eating like a boiled piece of chicken and some cold asparagus oh. out of a out of a Tupperware while I'm just throwing down. Yeah, I've seen him do it, guys. This is a uh, our main story today. Something and, and you guys, I have a whole long thing here. And <laughs> jump in with any interesting stuff or questions, but um, I've been interested in the James Webb Space Telescope for about five years, f- closely following it. And uh, it's going to go up into space. It's a space telescope uh, next year, um, or it may be even early 2018. But this thing is super exciting. It's the cutting edge in technology. And my opinion has been recently that 
I'm a space nut. I love sci-fi. I love science itself. But um, I don't think we should be going putting people on other planets like Mars or trying to do leave the solar system or anything like that. I don't think the technology is there to make it affordable or practical. And I don't think we're going to learn really much on Mars with with a, with astronauts walking on the surface for five minutes and then hopefully getting back in the ship and coming home and not dying. Um, I think my my philosophy on finding life and finding and exploring space is through telescopes, through optics, through looking. If we can inc- continually increase that technology, that's those are the important discoveries we'll make. Um, so, oh, man. Well, and I, and I, I think you and I have spoke about this before, that I, I disagree with you. I, I think we should be putting people out there. Okay. For several reasons, not the least of which a lot of times real problem solving and real innovation only comes, not only comes, but often comes from strife you know forcing yourself to right. overcome a hurdle you know war war causes innovation i mean that's just known you know and similarly so does frontiersmanship yeah causes you know and pushing the boundaries by going to other planets well, it's like we such. just mentioned granger like disciplining your, giving yeah. yourself limits well when they're artificially imposed when you just say i'm just not gonna eat well that's entirely different than when it's like well no i'm in the middle of nowhere I'm not eating. Like, I can't. There's nothing here for me to eat. I need to find a way to survive. Yeah. It's like that movie The Martian. You know, he had to find a way to survive. Right. Well, you make Spoiler a good point. Spoiler alert. I just don't know if... Uh, I just think it's it's too elaborate. It's too hard to get there to Mars right now. And I think we should focus our energies. And I think they're only doing it to collect money for NASA so they can do the things they really want to do. Like sending probes to Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, or... Or building this telescope. They, they're trying to get funds by exciting the public, the populace, the way they did with the moon thing in, in the 60s. So so they're going to make a sequel to Capricorn 1? I don't know. I've never seen I, it. I don't, think, I don't think things like visiting Europa with a probe are ever going to be as exciting as sending a man to Mars. Or a woman. Sending a person to Mars. Or right. Right. visiting Uranus with a probe. Exciting. It would be more exciting. It's pretty exciting. But I don't know about useful. Well, define useful though, because we'll learn so much by putting people. There's out. no life on Mars. There's there will there's be once probably, we put people there. There's probably life on Europa. Okay, what what do we learn from learning about life on Europa? Uh, it, it's the single biggest scientific uh, discovery of all time, but, but, and that's amazing. That but life, what new snails. thing do we learn besides just that life we, exists French on places snails. other than Earth? We we get to well, test it and see what and it's see like. what it's like. Setting Europa. Going to Mars would be the same kind of testing. It's just not testing about a new life. It's testing about dust, it's our life and dust, dirt. And, Dirt and when seeing a better picture than we would see by just sending a probe, for all we know, you know like, uh, there could be life on Mars that we've never encountered, or frozen, we've, or under the surface of the Earth. We've never just, done just good core send samples. Another robot with wheels up there, a better one. Robot technology, so much cheaper, so much, <laughs> so much cheaper. cheaper. Yeah, than sending people there and bringing them back. Send a Kirby vacuum. <laughs> That'll Dustin suck dirt. it up, dude. Sucked up, Ant Man. All you Dyson need fan. is a little guy, a little crawler with a scoop. You scoop up the dirt. Well, I also you, have, I, I think it's better for it. humanity to, to, if we expand. As, yeah. as a species, it's better for us if we are on more than one planet. I can agree with you, but not now. I think later. I don't think we're there yet on the, the propulsion. How the will fuel. we get there unless we have to get there? Spoken like whitey. Colonize. <laughs> colonize. <laughs> colonize. Yeah, there must be indigenous people we can push off another fucking planet. So let's jump back. And if we look hard enough, we'll find them and screw them over. I I think that's that's the the policy that we should think about is from now, like whoever wins the next presidential election and probably whoever wins for the congressional seats too, we should maybe send them to space and they can govern from space. That's what I think they should do. All right. Noted. Duly noted, Mark. That actually would be kind of neat if there was a satellite. In the minutes of the Probably log. Probably how it's going to end up, man. You've seen that Matt Damon movie where all the happy, for- fortunate people live on the space station and we fucking toil down here in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> toil. Yeah, us troglodytes We are toiling. I, I will give yeah. you that. So I got a question for you, like speaking of colonizing and deep space and yeah. all that. So there, the, somebody, we get an invitation like, hey, long, like deep space mission. Right. Suspended animation. By the time you guys even get out of animation, everybody you know back on Earth pretty much gone Uh uh-huh like don't know if you'll ever make it back seems like there's a a planet you could habitate out there yeah would you go no yes would you i don't know man so like a rocky planet like this kind of but shittier because the climate's all fucked up blue mud hole somewhere in the multiverse would i go to that well 
Mm. No, it, it would just be too hard of a lifestyle. Like, why don't I move to Montana in the woods right now and live a very, very difficult lifestyle that will require ingenuity and learning all kinds yeah. of skills? They wouldn't let you in with that haircut, one. Yeah. Number two, don't, you'd have to grow a beard. Yep. Can you grow a full beard? A semblance of one. Can't live in Montana. You got to have a beef beard to yeah. live in Montana. Well, you, the, that, that's what I'm saying. Why don't I do it? I have the opportunity yeah, to live that life like now. Space. But you won't oh, be living on a I, frontier. Yeah. Space well, frontier. Montana is not a frontier. Right. A, a right. difficult. Well, it's, Montana, it's much bro. worse. I'll take your no. ass up there. You'd be like, I'm on the fucking. You think I could take Eddie someplace in Montana where he feel like he was on the frontier? Yes. Yeah, I think I could. But too. anyway, you're right. It's not technically the frontier. The planet I'm going to will be far, right. far more frontiersy. Yes. So right. if I'm not even willing to do Montana, is my point, right. why would I go there? Yeah. Well, I think there's more value in there being a frontier. Like, I, uh, of the four of us sitting here, I am the least likely to want to go a place where, like, there isn't internet. You just want to be on the spaceship. That's that's your thing. Come on, there's going to be internet on the spaceship. Yeah, you're going to have. They're going on some easily. fucking long deep I don't space. Think there will be because the the, the, the gonna, delay. Yeah. That's science. They don't have the Earth internet. You may be able to send packets. You They'll know, be like bitching out lag days. the whole time. This is bullshit. Yeah, yeah. You, you, but I'd still do it. It's like going back to the '90s with a modem. Up you there. won't go fucking <laughs> camping, but you're going to go to yeah. you're going to go to Tim Buck Planet. Let's yeah. be realistic, man. I'm I'm calling bullshit on Eddie. I don't think he's got. If you come camping with me once, I'll believe it that was, answer 100%. I, the only, I actually submitted a video to one of those reality shows once, and it was for that... Uh, the Mars Naked thing. and Afraid? No. Well, that's tempting. <laughs> now, uh, Utopia? I, didn't, I, haven't, I don't know if the show's coming out or if it got canceled or what, but like uh, the idea was they were going to drop you somewhere in... I think it was like... I don't know if they said where, but they uh-huh. were implying... Is that where all the little kids made the city or whatever? Governed themselves as like Lord of the Flies? That may be what in I don't I'm not sure what they call. Would it. Would you have ended life. up in a loincloth at some point? <laughs> yeah. that, well, the, the, the idea was supposed to be that they were going to drop you there with like 50 other people, and you guys were supposed to have to start from scratch in uh-huh. society. And that, although not a frontier, that that did appeal to me. I actually submitted a video. I didn't get picked because who'd pick me? I'm an asshole. But the point is, and I'm not like the fun kind of entertaining crazy asshole. I'm just an asshole. <laughs> that's that's not movie. That's not TV ready. You're not an asshole. But you know. Uh, <laughs> I signed up for that because that had an idea. You know, like just moving to Montana. It's like, yep, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Now I could drive two hours. And Were they looking the for people? Yeah. Like, there's no value in just doing that, but going somewhere and do and, and doing something. You know, going to that thing. It's a TV show, so it wouldn't be valuable. But in principle, it could have been. And going to another planet is valuable because now you are setting up a place that will later be its own thing. Right. So, so let me. I, LV246. Yeah. That's how that shit ends. And if I've this is a generational movie, ship and now you're, you're gone from Earth, right? So there's got to be some authority system on this ship. A captain, you know, a, a, it's probably be a naval command. Well, it wouldn't have been a generational scenario. ship based on what you were saying, Brian. Well, was, fine. No, I'm just Same saying thing. they're different things. Yeah, you're right. So Generational ship, I'm going to die in space. Well, I didn't I'd think still this, sign up for that. Right, I didn't think reasons. this through. I just, it, it <laughs> yeah. just came to no. me while John was talking about telescopes and you were talking about women and men walking on Mars. Well, the thing is, everyone wakes up from their cry cryogenic thing and chaos ensues mark's beautiful anarchy f- falls apart immediately so i would totally go <laughs> just to fuck it up just no to not it. to fuck it up to take charge uh, you don't want to be in charge i would want to be beef. in charge no, you commander, the commander in beef. <laughs> Holy crap. You, so then you're like a prophet. I'd be fucking. Because you yeah. predicted that. The I will be. I'll be, be I'd, regarded I'd as be a making prophet. motherfuckers walk the plank. <laughs> walk the space plank. <laughs> space plank. Space plank. Yeah, are there be space sharks out there? <laughs> <laughs> He'll put them out the garbage chute. Sandworms. I hate them. I don't know. So if you're in deep space and you made a hole in the hull about the size of like a, like say, a half dollar. Could that could that suck out your whole body into a, a th- like a liquid? No, it couldn't. No, how big would the hole a- have to be? Alien Resurrection is not a do- <laughs> is not a documentary. There is a sucking thing going on if you, there's a hole in a spaceship. But it's the it's positive. So I thought it would make it's, you implode. I thought the, no, no, the vacuum. He, I'm saying if you're the, standing next to the hole and all of a sudden a hole appears right. in the hull, there would be a sucking out type but of. thing. But what people don't realize is okay, what is uh, the pressure in space? Zero. What's the pressure inside of a hull? One atmosphere. Which is, I think it's something like 30 pounds or something. Like, it's not that much. Oh, it'll suck stuff out, but, like, it's 30 pounds. It'll be unpleasant. It won't it's not turn you into a jelly? It. Yeah. Oh, man. Forget it, then I'm out. It would just I wanted to you see someone get liquefied. Your ass would be sticking out. Yeah, like, you'd get damaged. It wouldn't be good for you. It would be a big purple mark on your ass. Or a hickey. But, <laughs> space space hickey. hickey. I made out. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a movie that, that she can I made out with space. Pressure That's hickey. I have but, a blood. It's the name of the episode, Space Hickey. But so they're putting this space telescope out in space. Yeah. So, like, aliens can watch the Earth? Like, 
What I don't. Well, I'll explain that to you, Mark. Um, it's like a viewing platform, right? Like the Grand yeah. Canyon. Yeah, <laughs> they have a couple <laughs> markers like this at this time. No, the reason to put a telescope in space is simply that the, at- the Earth's atmosphere gets in the way of the of the image, so we can't see nearly as far with a with the same size telescope on the Earth as we can if we put that buddy up there in space. Then he doesn't get the view doesn't get obscured by the Earth's atmosphere, all those gases. So uh, that's what Hubble does. So in 1990, I think all of us remember, they launch Hubble. And it's a you know, billion-dollar telescope, space telescope. goes up there. Images come back. Blurry. All blurry. It's not right. doesn't work. And, but, you know, it was a big story, and it was a huge disappointment. But luckily, it takes eight minutes to get to Hubble <laughs> from here. You get in a space rocket, and you fire yourself into space, and in eight minutes, you're at Hubble. And so they sent these freaking astronauts up there which by the way i think these guys are one some of the most heroic people ever spacewalks i mean come on it's ridiculous it's so dangerous it's so anything could go wrong but they go up there and they fix the mirror they clean it off or whatever and then they fix it and then these the images that we all know and love of of those distant galaxies and cloud nebulae lie lay come out and just the beautiful images you know Oh yeah, but that's that's when did they send Hubble up in like the nineties? Ninety, right? Ninety. Yeah. So it's probably like some fucking Kodak Instamatic like camera or some shit. I think you know uh, that, it's not like uh, ten thousand. I think NASA thousand eighty fucking DPI yeah. or whatever you know. Yeah. Wide NASA screen had fucking, their hands on some pretty good stuff. In but I'm saying technology in, is yeah, better now. So much better. Yeah, so, so how much better is the one they're putting James up? James Webb Space Telescope, it's going up soon, is 100 times more powerful. And the, so one Dude. time, this guy, they gave this different people control of Hubble and what to look at with it at different times. So this one guy goes, I'm going to spend my whole 10 days with Hubble, pointing it at the darkest point part in the sky. There's like two stars out there. It's a tiny pin tiny area of, of sky points it there and just lets the camera watch for 10 days long time exposure it comes back and it's now known as the Hubble deep field image and it's 10,000 galaxies are in the, the picture not new stars not new suns but galaxies that contain 100 billion stars each 10,000 of them were in that tiny tiny square of sky that Hubble looked at and now James Webb is going up there. It sees an infrared rather than the visual spectrum. It actually it, it can see some of the visual spectrum. We can see the, mm-hmm. lo, the the low end of the visual spectrum. Yeah. So it can do some visual, which is kind of a big deal in its own right too. Right. To make sure that there's at least some visible aspect to it. Yeah. Because they all the pictures from a telescope like that are going to wind up. All the pretty pretty pictures are actually colorized. We colorize them with I don't know purple. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, how, how do they know it's not just a planet that's made out of mirrors? Oh, that's a tough one, Mark. That's why they need you at NASA. <clears throat> but I'm going to back up a little bit because I love the history of this shit. So the 1400s, right? Copernicus comes out. Everyone thinks that the sun goes around the Earth, and in fact, everything goes around the Earth. The planets, all the stars, it, it, that's how it looks, so that's how it is at the end of the story. But it's weird, and they've, they've been trying to figure out how everything moves for centuries, and it was very complicated because, you know, a planet in the night sky, as the days go by, it goes across the sky, but then it doesn't just keep going. It loops back and then loops back again, and they're like... Retrograde motion. Retrograde, and they're like, why do planets do that? If they're all just going around us, why don't they just go around us? Why do they stop and go back the other way? So none of it it made any sense to them. Copernicus comes around, and he says, I've got a better way of looking at it. Let's pretend that the sun is in the middle, and everything else is going around that. And all of a sudden, the model became much clearer. (laughs) It was like orbiting things around a central thing. But he couldn't prove it. And he was so afraid of the church that he didn't announce this till the year he died, Copernicus. Uh, so this is in the 1470s. Yeah, it's a good way to get burned at the fucking stake. Oh yeah, but he he just he's like, oh oh, by the way, uh, everything goes around the sun. Bye, dead. And then ten years later, Galileo, this Italian brilliant man, hears about a Dutch invention called the telescope using lenses, and, he, and so Galileo builds his own takes a first look at the at the night sky and proves Copernicus right all of a sudden. He's like, he was freaking correct. This is true. Everything goes around the sun. Um, and then he saw Jupiter's moons and 
uh, all kinds of interesting stuff. So then by the 1800s, there's this great debate. We know this, everything goes around the sun, but is, is the universe just the Milky Way or are there other Milky Ways? Are there other galaxies? And uh, Edwin Hubble was looking at with our most powerful telescopes of the day. Oh, they were based on Earth, of course. This is like the 20s or 30s, I think. And he proves on, I, Edwin Hubble does a long observations, proves Einstein wrong uh, because Einstein thought the, the universe was static, can't be moving. And Edwin Hubble looks up there and finds out that the universe is expanding. And he found Andromeda, which is another galaxy. He's like, no, that's not a cloudy something. That's another galaxy, just like the Milky Way. And it's really far away. Uh, so um, that's the history. And then Hubble comes up. We launch a telescope into space, and we see farther than ever. And really, man, I mean, there's a documentary where I'm getting all this, this whole narrative sort of thing called Telescope on Discovery Channel. just came out. Awesome, worth watching. And uh, when you see those deep field images, man, it's like you, you think you're – I tweeted something about this. You think you're going in for like a slightly boring science documentary, and then you're like almost crying when you're looking at these images, just how, how large they are, the size, the, the scale, and the, and the colors and every, how everything looks in, out there. It's, it's just, like Sagan's Pale Blue Dot. Yeah. Have you ever seen that picture? The picture of the, from the, the Voyager sent back? Uh, after it, when it was leaving the solar system, I think it was when it was leaving the solar system. It was leaving the inner solar system. Oh, just yeah. and just like see this big thing that looks all noisy and staticky. And you can't really see anything. Well, this one tiny piece of static is us. Yeah, <laughs> is Earth. Seeing the Earth from that distance, oof. the mirror on That's why the, science is so awesome. <laughs> the mirror on the Webb telescope is three times the size. Now, here's a quiz, pop quiz, because you you brought up the Hubble telescope. What was wrong with it? Why was it blurry? There was a flaw in the mirror. Well, these are, by the way, these are reflecting telescopes. They're not like Galileo's lens telescopes. Because a few years after him, Isaac Newton, of course, comes out and he goes, uh, I got way better. He's like, that's interesting. Here's a way better one. Uses a mirror. And all of these telescopes now are reflecting telescopes. Have you been up to Kitts Peak? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Kitts Peak awesome, here right? in Arizona is probably the best night Paula and I have ever had. We went up there, paid money. There's like 10 people in a group, and you look through. They didn't even let us look through the, the real telescopes. We just looked through like a $60,000 like home telescope kind of that's programmable and stuff, and it was amazing. We saw Saturn just like it would, like a cartoon of Saturn. It's the, the, the orb and then those flat rings. It was incredible. That's just a noise. Um <laughs> So anyway, yeah. Uh, what what was your quiz question? Well, I, I see because I, I love science as much as you, but I also like the history of science. You you know, we I think I talked before on the show about the Challenger explosion and Richard Feynman and how it exploded because of bad O rings. Yeah, I don't think I think we talked about that after the show. Never want to blow an O ring. <laughs> Basically, yeah, because that, that's what made the Challenger explode. So, yeah. Yes. In in the case of this, uh, the mirror was created perfectly. The problem was that when it was created, uh, when 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 they were generating the things that they were going to do to make the thing, it somebody inserted a washer as like a shim, and so it was off. And with a mirror that's two and a half meters wide, if you are off by a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit, then you get they call it spherical aberration, and it's it's basically you wanted a, an absolute perfect circle and you didn't get one. So this there's just, no such thing. Well, right. You know, so you're always trying to get as close to as perfectly, you know, you're, you're trying to do a very specific thing. And if you modify that by even the tiniest bit, you fuck up and you can't focus. So you can't here's focus the same yeah. like a stigmatism. Yeah. Here's here's a, here's the actually very good. Well done. James Webb. OK, is much larger. Did you say three times? Three times. Size it's like six and a half, right? I think. So the other one, the Hubble and was two and a half and now James Webb is six and a half. Visualize this. The mirrors very wide, as we just described, are so perfect that if you stretch them out, if you made them the size of the U.S., in other words, they stretch from New York to L.A., you increase the scale, there would be no deviation on that surface higher than three inches. Did I explain that? If you scale that mirror up to the size of the nation, there would be no hill or valley more than three inches on that plane. That's pretty... Flat if you're not following along well at home. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just astounded by that. So anyway, it's a billion so, dollar telescope. So going most up. most mirrors have a lot of peaks and valleys on them. 
It's a, well, in, so there's two things with a mirror like this. There's Imperfection. The, the, the physical shape of the mirror itself and then the smoothness of the, the yeah. item that's made out of it. If so you in took this, case, this mirror that's on my wall and you made it the size of the U.S., there would be deviations on there like miles high because if you look closely enough at that mirror, store-bought mirror, you'll see you know, imperfections and ups and downs and hills and valleys. Yeah, it's imperfection on a flat plane. So you got to use... But you can't feel with your finger. Right. Okay. Yeah. If you scaled it up that much, it would be giant thing, noticeable things. So uh, anyway. So talking about loving science and O-rings, um, <laughs> I like as you get... This is as, as, uh, I w- I'm, I'm going to ask Science Friday, but I was going to pass it by you guys first. As you get older, does your butthole get more wrinkles? Does the balloon not get more wrinkles? Well, you have to you have to be specific here. You are you which which are you talking about? I mean, the butthole. No, it's part of it's part of your skin. As right. you age, you get more wrinkles, right? Right. Your butthole is already wrinkly. Does it get more wrinkly as you age? Yeah, That's what we're here yes. for man to answer the big questions. Yeah. The what's, your, what, what's your opinion? I don't know. I'm ask, I'm I'm coming here as a student. I'm <laughs> a humble but- supplicant. A humble butthole supplicant. Yeah. I don't even want to chime in because that's what I had to say was too soggy weird. biscuit. It was, it was uh, too weird. I didn't. Uh, I'm going to announce you from now on as the <laughs> asshole supplicant, <laughs> <laughs> or the butthole supplicant. Whatever. Anyway, so good. this 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 uh, telescope. Well, final thing about it, you know, it, it it detects infrared, so heat. You can't get any heat in the way, so you got to get it far enough away from the Earth that the heat from the Earth doesn't get you know blur the image, and it's got to be far from the sun. So they're they're launching it to this T two uh, location, I think it's called, and that's a uh, a million miles from Earth. Hubble's right in the orbit. It's right there. Is uh, is, is Skynet involved? Um, no, but because they're yeah. launching it to T two. Oh, it's, it's yeah, and Earth Sun L two. That's what it is. So oh, it's launched L two. Okay, okay. <laughs> One, <Whew. laughs> it's a million miles from Earth, which means they can't repair it ever. If it goes up there and it doesn't work, and there's like 150 different mechanical pieces that all have to function perfectly before it gets too cold for them to work at all. If it doesn't work, they can't fix it. They can never go there. Generational ship. So that's a billion dollar dump in the ocean. Is that what that is? If it doesn't work, yeah. Oh man, pretty crazy stuff, huh? And just so, so how far did you say it was? Eddie will go fix it. One million miles from Earth. If they have internet, he'll go. What do you mean, shaking your head? Isn't it a million kilometers? No, I think it was miles. Why would it be kilometers? It's NASA. It's not fucking your NASA. Or whatever it is, it's about five times as far away as the moon. Okay, it's a million miles. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> USA, USA, English system. If y'all, not can see, if y'all can see Eddie's fucking face right now. <laughs> Look, man, I don't like the metric system any more than you do, but it's what they use. <laughs> It was an American documentary. So not, they, not after Trump becomes president. It's going to make America great again. It's going to force Mexico to use our system, whatever it's called. You think he's going to build a fucking, like, what, 653-kilometer wall? No. No. Oh, Did you man. hear him the other day? Someone challenged. He's like, you can't build that wall, and you can't build Mexico for it. He goes, it just got 10 feet higher. <laughs> <laughs> it just got 10, <laughs> ten feet ten higher. Feet higher. Yeah. It's like, we're, no, he's like, no. How, I, much, I, how much longer till it catches your ego? He's, a, he's like, I challenge your assumption that. This is all fantasy, and I raise you, you with a bigger fantasy. fantasy. <laughs> did, did you hear what he was talking about, the libel laws? Yeah. Because free speech is a, is a big topic of mine. Like that, that, I'm, no, I'm certainly no lawyer, but it's something I, I, I look into a lot and I try to keep track of. And he's just like, we're going to expand the libel laws, and then I can sue anybody who says I don't, I don't like what I Trump say. Trump is very upset about yeah. some articles that have been written about him on, in every newspaper and magazine in the world. And he's, he says, you know, I'm not going to put up with this. As president, right. I'm going to make you – able to sue the press for saying things that are mean about people like me 
oh, you're going to get rid of, which one is that? Habeas corpus? Which one is that? Habeas corpus? Whatever. The what? Habeas porpus. It's a fucking, the, the freedom. Habeas of, porpus? <laughs> the freedom of the press. Yeah. It's known as the flipper law. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to, he's just going to modify that. Actually, it's known as the blowhole law. Yeah. And his supporters and there, are like, sure, cool. There yeah, are countries what? like that. There, there's uh, Turkey just recently had a thing. Uh, someone compared the president of Turkey to Gollum from Lord of the Rings. So he got sued. Yeah, I, I believe well, it's true that the U.S. has the freest uh, speech laws and press in the entire well, because, world. Okay, a good yeah, so thing. Can you guys? Okay. So back in the '80s, Larry Flint had an article written in Hustler about Jerry Falwell, saying that I think it was a comic. I don't even think it was an article. It, it might have been a comic, but it was basically about Jerry Falwell losing his virginity to fucking a pig or something. And then fucking his mom, too. There you go. Yeah, I was going to say that. At and, some point, and, he said he fucked his no, mom. No, and, and he said he <laughs> fucked his mom, too. So did and he. so Jer- Jerry Falwell sued Larry Flint for libel, and it was thrown out of court, or he didn't win because they said, this is obviously comedy. Right. It's obviously a jo- satire or whatever. But, so, no, it's not. You don't want to set precedent, either. Like. So there's one absolute defense to slander or libel in the U.S. that's not present in other countries. Do you you guys, have to know that it's tr- false. Truth is it? No, no, actually, no. Yeah. Truth is an absolute defense to libel. If you say this is true, like if Jer- if I said Jerry Falwell fucked his mom and then I had pictures of him fucking his mom, I can't be sued for libel in the U.S. Right? Oh, yeah. In a, in England, you can. Right. Oh, yeah. It you has to be in the U.S. Be it has to be, but I think I it has to be wrong. It has to be Step false, is it has and to be you false. have to know it's false for one to, of those libel mm, or slander. No, you no. have to know that it's false. No, no. That's not true. Uh, you you have to know. You have to either know or be willingly negligent, like where you don't care. Because if you don't care and you start throwing around things that aren't true, you can be sued for libel. Like, oh, I never looked into it, so I didn't know it was false. That's not a defense. <coughs> and there's also two standards for whether it's a public figure or a private figure. The standard for a private figure is actually lower. Like, it, it, all you basically have to do is prove it's false and that they didn't do a good enough job retracting it. Right. And then you can sue. Whereas with a public figure, you have to prove ne- you have to prove maliciousness. One it, would think this is a bipartisan issue that we could all shake hands on. Let's keep the press and speech free. Let's just focus on that little guy. But Trump wants to... He wants a- Apple to give up to. Uh, he wants Trump. He wants Apple to give up the back door to all their phones to the FBI. You know who else? Wants- you know who else was in favor of that? Actually, give up. no. Um, I was frothing at the mouth a little bit. Uh, Sam Harris. Sam Harris is all like, you know, because only only people who have something to hide don't want the government to look up their ass. He with really the used that argument. No, I was. I'm exaggerating no. his argument. But some, he actually says at one point, only people, only criminals. Want to protect their privacy. When, when Trump comes calling, only criminals will be protected. When Trump but, comes calling. Yeah, but did you hear... Rubi- no, Trump always rings once. <laughs> but did you hear Rubio's reaction to that? He was all, oh, Trump really loves suing people. He should sue whoever did that to his face. Oh, <laughs> really? That's awesome. <laughs> That's the Republican side. Marco Rubio is now officially only negative, <laughs> negative 99 in my score of awful people. Yeah. He gained a point. Well, yeah. but Mar- Marco Rubio, I don't know if I talked about this story, also was calling Trump out in the last Republican debate about uh, his policy on Israel because he doesn't think he's pro-Israel enough. Who and doesn't Trump's, think who? Rubio does not think Trump is pro-Israel enough. Okay. And so he was trying to get him to tell his policy, and Trump, of course, is like, well, you know, I'm not, I- I'm pro-Israel, but I'm... I want to be more neutral because I want to bring peace to the Middle East, you know. Uh-huh. And then they were arguing about it, and basically Rubio goes, whatever Trump was saying, goes, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict is not a real estate deal. Right. Oh, I heard about it that. It is not a real estate deal. And it's just like... A little catchphrase. Uh, so just to be clear, the two groups of people fighting over one plot of land yeah. is not an issue... <laughs> About real estate. Yeah. And if Trump had known anything about the issue, he could have been like, yes, it is. <laughs> and everyone would have laughed. That's literally and all it's about. Yeah. Man, but. We're done with O-rings, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. I, you yeah, you I'm, and I'm, Mark I'm were mouth, falling asleep. Yeah. Do you remember where you were when the Challenger blew, blew up? I think I was in school. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was during a school day. That's yeah, what I, I think always they hear. rolled a TV and let us watch the carnage. Mm-hmm. Um, we might have even actually been watching when it blew. Yeah, it was it was piped yeah. through a lot of schools because they yeah. threw that teacher on there. Yeah, and I remember. Yeah. I rem- I think it was on in our classroom, and 
I remember having some horribly inappropriate thought like <laughs> that wasn't supposed to fucking happen. <laughs> it's so horrible to watch that. Like, it's I awful. was not in school. No. And John, what year were you born? Eighty two. Nineteen ninety, I was in school. Uh-huh. You were in and, and if that's when the challenger, challenger explosion was, was if that's was when the eight. challenger explosion was, then you would be then you would be in school, but that's not that's when the not challenger like, explosion yeah, that's was. Not when so. up. When was it, it blew up in like eighty seven or eighty six. Eighty six. Oh. Why did I say ninety so you doing? Doing? Like, like, You were eating glue or no something. Idea what's dude. Going hey, 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 whoa now. Glue can be tasty. Sounds right. Well, paste. Paste is tasty. Glue's gross. Yeah, I was Paste. definitely in school. Yeah, I was, I was. I was in a Spanish class with, and me and a couple of my friends Muy mal. Tor- tormented the poor teacher, who basically wore a sackcloth dress like every day to school. And sackcloth. she, she was, Spanish teacher. Yes, yeah, I had a Spanish teacher. Spanish teacher like that too. Man. Did it say onions on the side of it? <laughs> should have, <laughs> but uh, we were horrible to the poor lady, and then she wheels the TV too, in yeah. to watch this thing, and what happened happened, and we could not stop laughing. Oh, <laughs> my God. She, we, we basically drove her to tears, and she left the class. Yeah. I, I had a Spanish teacher that I made cry once. I... <sighs> At the at the list of a long line of things, I, I raised my hand to ask a question, and I, I could tell she didn't want to call on me. And when she did, I asked her if she had gotten her shoes at Winn-Dixie. Oh. And, and it, was, oh. it was the last straw, man. She just couldn't. We made a male teacher cry at the military academy that I went to, the Catholic school slash military. And uh, he was like this extremely effeminate man. Was it, bro- it wasn't Brother Boner, was it? No, no. Uh. Brother penis, brother penis, no, right? No. Ah, fuck it. Uh, it was a, it, was, it wasn't a, a religious. It wasn't a brother. It was just a teacher, and uh, he was like very, very effeminate. And we were just like the first day he came, he started talking. He was all nice and trying to be happy and like have a nice first day. And we're all looking at each other like, is this for real? Like we can't. Like this isn't going to last a half an hour. <laughs> we're going to tear this guy apart because they were already. I guess that we were already horrific to several other teachers, but this guy, it was like a, it was like a struggling fish on the bottom of a canoe. There was no chance, yeah. and they, I don't even want to. It was all horrible homophobic epithets, and he left crying from the room on the first day, and he never came back. We, that teacher was not our teacher that year for that class. Who'd you get, the principal? Yeah, we got the disciplinary guy yeah. for a few, for like a week That's until they ship goes. someone else in. Yep, they put in substitute some substitute, and you get threatened with the pain of death. For yeah, me. we had another guy that we 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 duct taped a tuna fish sandwich to the bottom of his desk on the last day of school <laughs> nice. before Christmas break. And so when we came back two weeks later, that thing had to be ripe, and you and you couldn't find. I don't know who came up with that, but like you you could smell it, but like. I, where are you, you going to look on the bottom Does underside any, of your desk? <laughs> Does anybody remember those old? They were like they came in the, like these little glass tubes. stink bombs. Yeah. Oh, the, the amber colored liquid. Yes, they were horrific. The, we, That's what my farts smell like. I got to tell you, bro. I punished some teachers with those things. I'd take a handful of them and just smash them in their classroom on the way by and. Like oh my God. during lunch or something, and we yeah. we had the two tell, wings tell, of the stink. school, and what I would do, I would stand on the third floor and I would drop one of those down the stairwell to the bottom <laughs> floor. <laughs> it's just malicious. God, uh, that was such a fucking. Well, the one of the on our volatile chemicals episode last week, one of the things I skipped was this this chemical they made that stinks so horribly that they dropped a, a drop of it can make a whole building full of people vomit and pass out and <laughs> and just feel dizzy and all kinds of horrible nausea. And they dropped a vial of it in a German lab. And then they like closed the steel doors and like shut the place down. People five buildings over were getting symptoms of nausea and illness and they could smell it. It just penetrated everything. It's almost like a super fluid. It was going through the walls. I noticed you said German. Yeah, they make all what this crap. What are they doing over there? <laughs> they're they're all are they always out of line? The Germans they're just always I'm sure fucking around some with something they shouldn't be. <laughs> it must have a scientific application or something. Just drop a vat of it over Russia during the I next don't war. Know, man. I, every time it's the Germans, I'm like, it's eugenics. I, they're on. They're fucking around. They shouldn't be doing what they're yeah. doing. I don't trust some Germans, <laughs> they're man. Playing God. 
I trust Germans individually, but not as a whole. <laughs> That's so a like, sound policy. I, yeah, I have German friends I trust individually, but Germany is a country, y'all. Well, anyway, <laughs> thanks for listening, everybody. Contact us on the on the on the Twitter or the Facebook. And uh, or leave a comment on the website. Or the there's, website. There's, there's comment space on the website. We'll there's also a forum. There's a forum. Yeah. There's one whole post. Penthouse on forum. <laughs> we'll read your stuff online if you have opinions. So Send keep listening, email. guys. Uh, bye.